Warning! The following episode contains mature subject matters, mentions of immigrant culture, and a Brazilian host with the energy of a chaotic vampire. Listener discretion is advised. Today's guest is a great friend of mine. His name is Adam Daddario. He is a filmmaker, a journalist, and pretty much the Canadian Stephen Colbert. I go to Adam when I want to know anything about Canada and what's going on in the news because I have a really hard time keeping up with Canadian news. They either talk about American news or when they do talk about Canadian news, there's usually really boring and I just can't keep up with that. <laughs> so Adam breaks it down for me in a way that's understandable for an immigrant and he is a really great friend of mine. Adam, thank you so much for coming to the show. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> Thanks for that introduction. So, Adam, for the people who do not know you, which is pretty much everyone else but me in this podcast, what is your personal background? Where are you from? I'm from a small town outside of Toronto called Oxbridge, and I am... Good old Oxbridge. Yeah, good old Oxbridge. And I grew up there. We moved there when I was really young. So I grew up there and there wasn't a whole lot going on in that town. So at a very early age, I would fill a lot of my time by like screwing around on my mom's MacBook and I would make videos on the webcam and then I would edit them in iMovie. And that's how I learned how to edit. Uh, and that's kind of carried me all the way till now. Like I learned how to edit all the way back then in iMovie. And then over the years, I just progressively got better at editing and today like i'm entirely self-taught when it comes to editing so just from that early age of doing it i got i got good at it and yeah and i've always been very chronically online to the point that like like i spent all my all my young my young childhood adolescence watching like online content so i was watching a lot of youtube at the time and yeah so that got me passionate about creating stuff because i would just see people doing it all the time i'm gonna sneeze um <coughs> sorry bless you <laughs> um two questions one do you remember any specific movie that you made when you were younger i don't i remember when i was um when I was a kid in the seventh grade, we had to do a project for school, a history project, and we had to create three creative like assignments. <clears throat> and we did videos. Me and my me and my best friend did. Uh, we made one video that was like vlog style because that's when like vlogs started really uh, popping off back in the back in that time when I was in grade seven. That's when they like first started, I would say, when vlogs like first started. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, for the second one, we did like an animated thing. And then for the third one, we did a music video. And we, <laughs> Ooh. and we like green screened it and stuff. My bedroom was painted green. So we used my wall as a green screen. And we just created this like rap music video. That's so funny. And did the wall actually work? Like barely. Screen? It worked a little bit. It's funny because I remember my first, my first attempt at making a film was with a cell phone that I had um, in Brazil. And around the time I started to get self-conscious about things, I went through that cell phone and I deleted all of that because I was afraid somebody in my school was gonna come across that and use it to make fun of me or something yeah. and i deeply regret deleting yeah. those because i highly remember one of those it was it was the weirdest thing ever it was literally a two minute video 
of me doing the weirdest things and ugly faces. Like, it was like a niche that I created in my head for the audience of Juan. I don't have any of the videos that I used to do, so I don't know. I couldn't tell you about them, but... And I don't remember most of them. I just remember doing them, like, every single day when I got home from school. Um, and did you do all of them while you were in Uxbridge, or did you... Um... Like, at what point did you move to Toronto? I moved to Toronto in 20, at the end of 2016. I went to Ryerson for like a semester and a half before I dropped out. That, that brings us to the next point, actually, which is your professional background. You said you went to Ryerson. What program did you go to Ryerson Language for? and intercultural relations. Wait, yeah. really? I don't know why I thought you went to school no, for film. No, I went film. to school for language and intercultural relations. What does a person graduated from language and intercultural relations even do well i was the first group of students that got to attend this program so like it was a new program when i came into oh. it i don't know what all those kids are doing now but uh i'm sure they're working in like government jobs and stuff you had to um you had to pick a language to like major in and you had to learn that language so a lot of people, obviously, the choices were French or Spanish. But I chose French because I figured, like, we're in Canada, so. And did you do only one year of the program? I did a semester and a half. I didn't even finish the school year. <laughs> I um, I worked for a while, and then I got really bored while I was at work. And then I started uh, researching stuff about the uh, the, like, toxic drug deaths that have been going on in this country for many, many years now. And... Through that research, I decided to make a documentary. And so then I made the documentary, finished that documentary, started working on a second documentary. This was during the pandemic, got really bored during the pandemic, saw my roommate going back to school and how he was like, he always had something to do. And it just seemed like a good thing to do during the pandemic. So I, I applied for college and then went for journalism for two years. Now that you graduated yeah. journalism where where do you stand when it comes to your scope of the industry like are you optimistic to continue to work as a journalist or do you think you're going to pivot towards a different um job i'm optimistic like i would like to work in journalism and write articles and stuff like that but at the same time like it's hard to get a journalism job in toronto because a lot of people want you to have like experience somewhere else before you work in toronto i don't really i don't really want to leave the gta right now like at least not right now and so so you'd have to be a reporter in like Uxbridge no, even, or something even worse too. i'd have to be a reporter in like regina saskatchewan <laughs> yeah sorry to anyone living in regina saskatchewan but like ugh. yeah like i would have to go like <laughs> to the yukon like that like yeah, I don't really want to leave the GTA right now, so I don't like at least not right now. So I've just been I've just been Twitch streaming and and doing political commentary on Twitch mm -hmm. like from a from Canadian focus. Like I've been covering the wildfires a lot the last couple of days. But you make it fun. You make it fun. You make it interesting. Yeah, cuz I just yell and swear about what's going on. <laughs> Let's put a pin on the Twitch stuff because we're going to go back to yeah. this in a few minutes. But before we get there, why don't you tell my listeners a little bit about your experience with Flood, the documentary, all the way from um, how long did it take you to shoot everything you needed? Like, did you encounter any problems with authorities or anything like that? Because you're talking about something really sensitive. What was it like? Flood was really easy in terms of, like, actually making it. Like, it was never really that difficult. From start to finish, it was about it was about nine months. That's, like, with research and filming. It was, like, nine months, the whole process. And, um, yeah, I never had any experience, like, bad experiences while filming it. I never really had, like, run-ins with authority during that documentary mm -hmm. it's a documentary i'm filming now that i've had problems with it's not that doc that documentary was pretty easy when it came to actually shooting it it was pretty easy when it came to like raising funds for it and like marketing it and like convincing people that like for years and years harm reduction workers had been kind of shown in the media in more of a, like a negative 
light. So like trying to convince people that I was going to be fair to them yeah. took a long time. And now that I did that once, I don't have to do that really again. Like I, I, I think like flood really spoke for itself. People got to really like see the way that I represented the issue and they, and I, a lot of people liked how I represented the mm -hmm. issue. And so now like, in now with doing this documentary it hasn't been as hard to like convince people to come on camera because i have that previous body of work yeah but it's been difficult in terms of like yeah like run-ins with authority and like so what is your policy so so with flood was about the um overdose epidemic in canada what is your current documentary about the current documentary is similar it's just about the situation in alberta because when I went to Alberta in 2019, it was just after the new government had come in. And so nothing had really, things were all kind of under review and on pause, but nothing had really changed yet. And then in 2020, like right peak pandemic, a lot of stuff started changing in Alberta. That's why we went out there and started filming. So is it flood number two or is it an entirely different documentary specifically about Alberta? No, it's definitely separate. Like, it's not flood number two because there was a different, I don't know, it's like similar topic, but it was a diff whole different vibe in 2019. Like, everything was so different back then. Like, yeah, there was really bad, like, overdose statistics and, like, toxic drug death st statistics, but um, compared to, like, now and how much worse things are now, and like how tired people are now versus how people felt in 2019. Like, I feel like there was more hope in 2019 for these kinds of issues because, and then I don't know, just the pandemic and a mix of a bunch of different things just kind of broke people down. And now I just feel like there's not a whole lot of hope when it comes to this issue. Interesting. Like there used to Interesting. be. Interesting. And did you, you said that you had some issues while filming it. What issues did you have? Mm -hmm. one night we were filming uh with the lethbridge overdose prevention society and they were doing an overdose prevention site in a park in lethbridge alberta and uh they this this uh this was just after like it was so cold it, it had there was just like this really weird winter storm that hit in november mm -hmm. all of a sudden um so it was like negative 20 degrees out and we were filming in this park and there was a conflict between the people running the site and these people that were like protesting the site. This guy came in and like started pushing the, the people who organized the site and the cops thought like I had gotten it on film, but I didn't and they thought I was lying to them. And so we noticed that when we, when we left and we were heading back because we were staying in Calgary, so we left, left Leth, Lethbridge to go back to Calgary, which is like two hours. So the police, we noticed, were following us until we got on the highway. That's annoying. Were you scared? In the moment, yeah, but like, we, I don't know. It was more scary because it's like, we're in the middle of nowhere and it's so dark out. We're in this, like, we're in rural Alberta and we're being followed right now. Um... And the police, honestly, that night at the, not that, you know, not that you can really expect much anyway from the Lethbridge mm -hmm. police. Um, they were like super unhelpful towards the people that had been assaulted that night. And like, they were really confrontational. So it wasn't like the mix of that and then being kind of in the middle of nowhere in the middle at the middle of the night, like it was like 2 a.m. And we're in the middle of nowhere and were being followed so yeah that was scary but like in hindsight they weren't gonna do anything but it wasn't until we got back a couple months after we got back or like a couple weeks after we got back a report came out about the lethbridge police uh using like using like their database to like illegally search through the records of an ndp politician in lethbridge and they were like following her and taking photos of her and shit so it's like when that report came out, all of a sudden it was like, because we, we told people about this incident and a lot of people kind of like thought maybe we were exaggerating it. They brushed it off. Didn't... 
yeah like maybe it didn't happen or maybe we were exaggerating it but then when that report came out it was like yeah of course it fucking happened if they were doing this like why wouldn't they follow us honestly yeah that makes sense well that's scary was that the only uh, running that you had with uh, the police whilst filming the second doc documentary so far yeah so okay. far well hopefully that remains the only one <laughs> yeah that was three years ago so going back to uh canadian politics and your munching up of it and your stream why don't you talk a little bit about what that experience has been like i've only been streaming for two days now mm -hmm. and so far it's been very like it's like something to look forward to i like going live on twitch and and just talking about canadian news and canadian politics um like today i got to talk about the wildfires and uh pride month and mm -hmm. that was like it was it was just like it's stuff that if i was on my own looking into this stuff it's like this is the stuff i would be thinking in my head anyway so now i'm just saying it out loud like so even if there's not that many people watching it's just like it's still what i would be doing anyway so it's like might as well do it i live. love that i love that the the one episode the one highlight that to me was the funniest when i tuned into your first stream was all of your comments about people's clothes yeah those reporters were really well dressed <laughs> And a lot of drip. I'm telling you, if they put those reporters where the forest fires are, they would extinguish the forest fires because they had so much drip. So much drip. It's funny because yeah. as an immigrant, I didn't fully know what you meant as drip at first. So I actually thought you meant wet. <laughs> and I was like, why? Yeah. Where are they wet? Uh <laughs> no 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 they had a, they had good drip and if they were in where the forest fires are they would extinguish those forest fires and um for anyone interested in starting to keep up with your streams is do you have a random schedule or are you go is there somewhere where you'll be announcing when you're coming up with a new stream or if you go on my twitter which is just at adam Dario, if you go on my twitter um I post like when I'm going live it's pretty random right now because I don't know when the best time to go live is so I'm just like trying different times trying it out as you go yeah and then eventually I'll find a schedule that that works okay so to recap for anyone interested in following you or keeping up with your streams your username on Instagram and Twitter I believe is Adam underscore Daddario and it's Adam underscore Daddario on Instagram and just Adam Daddario on, on Twitter. On Twitter, okay. And how do you pronounce your username on Twitch? Adamo Shamo. <laughs> and what does that mean? It just means stupid. <laughs> it, just means, like, it means like foolish. Foolish Adam. Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, well... Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast, Adam. And I Thank look forward too. to being a guest in your stream sometime. Yeah, we we should do that soon. Wick says says hi too. Well, say hi to Wick too. Do you not see him? Do you not I see him? I do. I see him, and his little his little freckles. He's so cute. Aww. I feel like he thinks you have a treat. <laughs> Probably. Aww. Well, um, thank you so much for joining me again. And uh, we, we really need to start uploading our old episodes. Of Haunted Comedians? Haunted Comedians. We have to start uploading it. Because yeah. fall is going to be right around the corner. And it's going to be easier to record new stuff. If we already uploaded that's, the stuff. That's true. Okay. Well, I'm going to end the recording now. And we'll say bye to the audience. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Please follow Adam. And don't forget to donate money for his fundraiser for the documentary. Yeah. And subscribe to me on Twitch 
And you can give me money that way. <laughs> exactly. And if you have a Prime account, you can subscribe yeah, for your, free. Give me your Twitch Prime. <laughs> give me all your Twitch Prime. <laughs> okay. We will include the link to Adam's fundraiser on the description of this episode. Thank you everybody for listening and I'll Thanks. see you in the next one. Bye. And this was the episode. You've made it. You survived my voice this entire time. Wow. Thank you so much for supporting me. If you'd like to stay up to date with my weekly episodes and occasional videos, please follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Laura Faritos. If you'd like to stay up to date with my work besides the show, please go ahead and sign up for my monthly newsletter. There I summarize key takeaways from my episodes, I share links to any other content I produce, and I also include tickets to comedy shows, so that's always nice. Finally, if you'd like to take an extra step and support support the making of the show, please consider making a one-time donation, buying my merch, or signing up for my Patreon for just $2 a month. You get all my content ad-free, full length, and sometimes even the behind-the-scenes process. I'm looking at you, media production students. You like the show? Uh -huh. Do you? Do you? You like the show? Prove it. Give me your money. Pay me cash. Dollars. I want dollars. This has been a public service announcement. See you in the next episode. Ciao, ciao. So for the...